Yeah, um, I was asked to uh, be a commentator, and I try to avoid it for uh, uh, some reasons. First, I saw there was so much wisdom already on the panel, so adding more was not necessary. And second, I, I'm not really an insider to this discussion, but I assume that this was the reason they wanted me to, to appear as commentator. So I, I will give a, a kind of an outsider look to a certain degree to, to what you are doing. Yeah? And uh, I think in a sense what you are proposing here is uh, a, a kind of revival of uh, an SDS, Science Technology Society perspective, but now extending it, extending it to, to processes of innovation and, and development. And, and I think it's, it's very interesting for us to look at the study which is now pursued by Jan Fagerberg, where he, he, he really maps the knowledge base of three different areas. One of them is innovation uh, uh, studies, one is STS studies, and one is entrepreneurship studies. And what's interesting with this is that you would assume there's a lot of overlap. It's not. It's actually uh, uh, people who do work with the SDS do not engage much with the same infrastructure, journals, et cetera, as the innovation people. So, so I think uh, what you are doing is interesting in that sense that you, you in a sense, start to to, to establish some kind of, of bridge from, from one to, to the other. Um, so uh, I, I have tried to some degree to do uh, the move in the opposite direction. In much of my work since 93, we started to do work on, on the learning economy, me and Bjorn Jonsson. Uh, uh, when I gave my, my, my first lecture as professor in Alborg, it was about the social dimension of the learning economy. So you can say that I tried to go from the innovation perspective into understanding the... So perhaps we should try to compare the outcome and, and discuss how we could enrich each other's uh, attempts to overcome these barriers between different... Uh, uh, disciplinary uh, areas. Um, I have some questions. Uh, one, one question relates to the manifesto. I wonder, uh, would it not be useful to make a more clear distinction between the two issues, between uh, 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 between uh, social cohesion and sustainability? Because if you, if, you, if you separate the two, you can begin to discuss the relationship between the two. For instance, what kind of, of uh, uh, efforts to do something about the sustainability issue uh, have what kind of impact on income distribution and inclusion? So I think it, it would actually be, and, and the other reason is, of course, that the problems come out of different types of dynamics. And, and therefore, I think just just banking them, taking them together, and 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 uh, might not really be the best best way of stating the problem, and to designing policy response. Um, I think uh, uh, what what uh, 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 Rasigan was was saying. I'm, I'm going to say similar things in a sense. I think. A lot of, of the kind of crisis we are watching now reflects uh, something with, with governance, uh, where you have globalized economic processes and you have most of the political power concentrated at the national level. And, 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 and the not, it's not a very strong power because, because it's so much conditioned, conditioned by, by the strengths of the market and, and, and you you, you end up with these very simple uh, ideas about national competitiveness, which means you can't do anything. Huh? So I think to, to, to state that more clearly is useful in order to develop strategies. Uh, 
we have a situation, I mean, it's so clear now when we see, you, we changed governments in, in Italy and Greece, and, and who did that? It was not the people, huh? it was, it was uh, uh, the market in a sense, huh? and, and we're gonna see more and more of that. And, and therefore, in order to understand, I, I completely agree with the last speaker that we cannot anymore separate completely economics and politics. I mean, these things are now getting so involved in each other. You can say that, that uh, markets dictate politics and without political intervention, the market economy is going to, to explode and break up itself. So we need to think uh, these things together. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, how do we how do we go about this? I, I put this very uh, uh, naively, but it's true. I mean, this is I say this is what it all is all about. It's about the fact that if we leave capitalism to itself now, it will uh, uh, undermine both social cohesion and, and, uh, and sustainability. I mean, this is, I mean, this is a basic problem. And, and uh, 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 there are many mechanisms here. It's in, and, and you can say you focus on, on the area of science, technology, innovation, but of course the financial dynamics. I, I, Carlotta Perez is giving talk in the other room, but she's doing very interesting work just now on trying to develop new strategies to, to come out of this kind of, of situation, which are perhaps more institutional at the higher level of, of governance than those that, that you are referring to. And uh, uh, you can say that the reason we, we have problems with that is that the traditional way, in a sense, to, to, to counter whale the market forces was, was a nation state. We build at least in some parts of the world, rather efficient welfare states which redistributed the costs and, cost and, and, and benefits of change, exactly what, what you are talking about. But the problem now is that, that the combination of global economy and, and, and the current national system doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work anymore. And, and you can say that welfare nationalism we have to rethink uh, uh, re uh, the welfare concept, to be begin to think about it in a transnational context. And ideally, I mean, if, if the Lisbon strategy for Europe had not become captured by the right wing, uh, uh, there could have been a beginning trying to build a, a European welfare state, but this study didn't happen. But something has to be thought about because now our, our current national welfare state are no more, uh, as you said, good to, to resist uh, what's going on on the global level. And, and when we look at, at uh, uh, the sustainability issue, the fact that, that every country has its own competitiveness strategy means that business interest will always tell you why it's impossible to do anything at the national level. So, uh, uh, we need to move, I think, either we have to move from national to transnational governance, or we have to take a step backwards towards more national regulation. And, and the problem with the second is that that might happen as the outcome of a major crisis, which is not impossible, and it could be combined with very negative political processes and also with dramatic social consequences. So, we have to, I think we have to take these broader institutional settings into account. Uh, if I look at the role of this manifesto, I think it has to do, as, as Rassigan was, uh, was indicating, with, with other movements like, like the, the anti-global movement, the Occupy Wall Street uh, 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 movement, uh, they all reflect attempts to raise the awareness of these problems. This is what they try to do. And, and uh, I see, I wonder how you see the manifesto in this, this context. I, 
I see it as, as a parallel effort to ra raise awareness about the limits of unhampered uh, uh, market uh, capitalism. And, and, but you address mainly academics, institutions engaged in science technology policy, and you try to raise their awareness and, and try to make them change the direction of what you are doing. This is what, how I understand your, your, your effort. Uh, but then it raises, what kind of alliances do you need to establish to transform such an awareness among these, as I see it, rather weak actors into effective political action? And, and what level of action? Uh, I mean, I think we need action at the very global level. We need, uh, 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 we need BRICS countries, uh, convince them to play a ro role. We need to, 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 to even get G7 and all these to act. But we also need change at the national level. And we need change at, at the local level. So develop a kind of strategy. We think about all these three levels. I think it would be uh, uh, very, very useful. Is there something more? Yes. Thank you. Thank you.